Survivor is the most thrilling adventure game on television. It is also the most dangerous. Bro, can you hear me? Three former players are returning for a second shot to finish what they started. In a lot of ways, Survivor Philippines feels a lot like what made the early season so popular, with a heavy emphasis on the social interactions and surviving. But the most important facet that made old school era of Survivor so magical was the characters involved, as the casting team was hitting it out of the park season after season in terms of compelling characters with strong stories. But with sprinkles of what modern Survivor was known for at the time of the season filming, it was able to combine the best parts of multiple eras. Starting this season with three tribes and captains was initially seen as a risk, as both of these mechanics were not well received in their previous iterations. With having them be successful here helps the season feel fresh from the very beginning and not a straight up old school season of Survivor. However, unlike other well received seasons of the show, Survivor Philippines might have had the most responsibility placed on its shoulders out of all prior seasons. And I would argue the only season that has had more pressure placed on its shoulders is this upcoming season, Survivor Season 41. And even then, Survivor Season 41 had pressure on its shoulders for completely different reasons. Now that we are so far removed from 2012 when this season first aired, it's hard to remember that this season is actually included in the Dark Age era of Survivor. And I think to first understand why this season is so good, we first need to talk about how it beat our expectations from what a Survivor season was capable of, and more importantly, how it saved the show. If that sounds interesting to you, then I recommend clicking the link in the description that contains every single one of my Survivor retrospective videos. This video on Survivor Philippines will hold up on its own, but if you'd like your stories complete and want to hear how we got to this point where Survivor needed to be saved, then I recommend checking it out. And of course, subscribe to this channel with the bell turned on so you don't miss any of these daily videos leading up to Survivor Season 41. 39 days, 18 people, 1 Survivor! To understand the importance of Philippines, we first need to back up a bit and look to the season that surrounds it. Starting out the dark age of Survivor, we have Nicaragua, a season I consider to be the second worst of all time, a season that just escapes the title of being considered the worst by the likes of Survivor Fiji. After Nicaragua, we have Redemption Island, a season that has some entertaining parts if you are a die-hard Boston Rob fan, but the terrible editing makes it hard to enjoy anything else in this season. And looking just beyond that, we have Survivor South Pacific, a season where people often ask why it even happened in the first place, with Ozzy and Coach having no real connection. Action. And with the addition of the religious alliance coach produced, it makes it a hard season to watch as well. It doesn't get much better because the season right before Survivor Philippines is One World, a season that I have referred to as being completely full of failed potential. And finally, right after Survivor Philippines, we have Fans vs Favorites 2, a season that completely flops on everything that it sets out to achieve. And so it's here, when you step back and look at the complete batting average of seasons in the Dark Age, that you start to understand where the community was at. I consider Survivor China to be in a similar spot as it began the goal golden age of Survivor and needed to hook people back in after the post-classic era. But I think the situation here with season 25 was even more important than it was during season 15. I think it was at the point where Survivor was getting into very dangerous waters where the question was coming up with how much longer can the show really last. After the old school era of the show, we saw many people lose interest and stop watching every single week. And the exact same thing was happening here with the seasons in the early 20s because the show's quality had dropped so significantly. This is something we never want to see happen with a show we love so dearly, but I can see the argument argument that the dark age of Survivor having bad seasons after bad season was actually important for developing the super fan community. People were beginning to lose faith in the show, and with that the casuals began to stop watching. And as a result of that, this hardcore community, the super fan community of Survivor, needed to come together. And I think with dropping the extra fluff in the fan base, the community at large actually grew stronger. And so with such low expectations, how is Survivor Philippines able to save the franchise? Drop your expectations. What makes this season of Survivor so powerful is that we dropped our expectations going into it. And I mean, that makes perfect sense when you look at the quality of seasons that Survivor Philippines was going to be compared against. When you lower your expectations, you can make a season feel more enjoyable than it possibly really is. But when you get a season of Survivor that's really good from start to finish and you go into it not expecting much, well, that right there is a recipe for success. A good season of Survivor needs to have a journey worth going on with compelling characters throughout and a strong conclusion to that very story. And I think I just described Survivor Philippines right there with that one sentence. As I mentioned at the very start of this video, this is a season of Survivor that had an old school feel to it with small twists and gimmicks to make it feel fresh for the 25th season of Survivor. And in large part, I think that's what makes this season so successful as it takes bits and pieces from what people enjoyed from previous seasons and wrapped it all together nicely in a single season. First and foremost, it's a character driven season that gives an old school vibe to it. Everyone was such a huge fan of the three tribe format that this season introduced that it became the new norm for a long time. We have the fall of Matt Singh and that was 
so compelling. This season, hidden immunity idols were hidden in plain sight, just like Survivor China, and a change in the captain's mechanic gave some much needed variety to the format. Jonathan Penner in Survivor, fans versus favorites, suffered a life threatening infection. Survivor captain seasons are fine and actually sometimes fun to watch. They get a lot of unnecessary heat from the community because it gets overused here with seasons 22, 23, and 25, but they are highly successful in bringing more eyes into a season during the first couple of episodes. The issue with captain seasons of Survivor arises when there's no reason for it to happen during the season or if the captains completely control the edit and we don't get screen time from any of the other characters. Neither of these are the case this season as the captains have a narrative purpose being former contestants who are medically evacuated evacuated, and they don't completely control the edit like Rob, Russell, Coach, and of course Ozzy, and starting with three tribes instead of two allows the producers to fix the meta that Boss and Rob had created in Redemption Island of finding a loyal alliance and get that majority of the alliance all the way to the merge. The exact same thing happened over and over again with South Pacific and One World. Starting with three tribes fixes that issue and the community absolutely loved it. You look closer and you go, okay, wait a minute, look closer at those tattoos. He's lost somebody. There's a death date of somebody on his arm. Most seasons of Survivor have that one or two iconic moments that you just can't discuss the season without bringing up those moments. And that iconic moment here is the mess of a tribe that was Matt Singh. This tribe has so much to talk about. You have, of course, the amazing characters involved, but also you have a now Survivor strategy based on their name. I am, of course, referring to the intentional Matt Singh. And I just think the whole concept of the intentional Matt Singh is so hilarious and bizarre that I've already brought it up in a couple of my Survivor retrospectives videos. The concept of the intentional Matt Singh is to intentionally lose challenges early in a three tribe season to replicate what happened with Malcolm and Denise this season. Once a swap or merge happens, you won't be seen as a threat, instead be thought of as an easy vote to find yourself into the majority. Malcolm ended up placing fourth and Denise won the season, so if any future Survivor players are watching this, I dare you to do a big brain move and attempt the intentional Matt Singh. But this tribe is more than just the legacy of its name, as we get some amazing characters here as well. It makes the most sense that we spend the most amount of time with them as they go to every Every single tribal council, but there's just so much fun to be had with this group. We have my favorite, first boot of all time, top tier survivor player with Zayn. If this tribe didn't end up voting Zayn out first, then he would have easily been the first three time winner of Survivor. More importantly, we have the early parts of what makes Denise's and Malcolm's bond so tight. I just had this gut instinct about Malcolm. He's young, but he's wise, and instantly we just after Denise and Malcolm get placed on separate tribes, we finally get to see the interesting character dynamics they have to offer with our Matt Singh duo finding footing in both of their tribes. Without going to tribal council, Calabao and Tandang are hungry to vote each other out, because even though they were successful in challenges, they 100% did not have tribal unity. And this is easily shown with the RC versus Abby battle, along with Jeff Kent's obsession with getting Penner out of the game. But this is where we get to have Denise be the first and probably only winner to ever go to every single tribal council throughout the season season and still make it to the end of the game and of course winning the game. Blend in with my new family here, kind of figure out what my role can kind of be. I'm just really glad to be part of your guys' tribe. I really am. The cast of the season gave us amazing character moments with Sarah kissing JP, Abby being Abby, Carter going to a grocery store, Jeff Kent with taxes, Pete stirring up some chaos, Lisa's amazing underdog story arc, Penner almost winning the game with one fatal mistake, Malcolm being my favorite player of all time, and of course, Denise being an amazing social player is the perfect winner for a character-driven season of Survivor. The winner of Survivor Philippines. The only real knocks that Survivor Philippines gets is for how bitter the jury ends up being in the end, and if you're cheering for Malcolm the entire way through. Although I still like Denise as a winner, I think Malcolm winning the season would boost its rankings up even more, as it's so hard to watch him struggle with the final immunity challenge, even with having an advantage. And having a bitter jury is probably my biggest Survivor pet peeve in making this season hard to watch in its final moments. But other than that, there is so much fun to be had with Survivor Philippines, and it's one of the greatest underdog stories of all time, with only Cook Islands having a better one in my opinion. You know what pisses me off? And I want this freaking million dollars in this game. And it's not even a million bucks. It's 600 grand by the time Obama takes it. This season of Survivor is truly the shining light throughout the dark age era of the show. And that is why Survivor Philippines saved the show. Please like the video if you haven't already. And let me know if you feel the same way about this season. My final rating for Survivor Philippines is an 8.7 out of 10. A tier.